Um, I want to talk about rocks and trees. That's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Um, Jesus said, as he entered Jerusalem, if, uh, if these people weren't caught up in praise, then uh, even, the, even the rocks and the trees would cry out. And the rocks, um, or I, I would make from these rocks uh, the people to praise. And that's true because we are of dust, and dust is just crushed rock. All we are, all we are, spiritually viewed, <laughs> is bits of dust with spirit inside, slowed down light. Norman Grubb used that a lot, but I think other people have, have said that before. All matter is, is slowed down or decelerated light. So, <laughs> uh, it's not very flattering, is it? <laughs> but it's true though, it's true, isn't it? The more physics people find out um, about the very small, <laughs> the more there isn't anything there. Um, trees. Now, you remember the blind man being healed. Uh, initially, he was only half healed. And he, saw, he said he saw uh, people as trees walking. And um, there's another rock-type image. And that was um, when Jacob was sleeping on a rock. He was so fed up. Probably he's exhausted, fed up, you know, everything, he kind of reaching rock bottom. He, other apocryphal scriptures say that he was mugged because he left his family with gear. He left his family with, um, she met, uh, the mother made sure that he had some stuff. So if he got mugged en route, then he literally would have ended up with nothing. In which case, you can understand him. Um, having to concede to someone that he knew, Laban, so he uh, hitched himself up with Laban. But the thing is, sleeping on a rock, he had this dream, and the dream was so vivid and real, because spiritual dreams are so vivid and real, he saw a ladder stretching up to heaven and with angels ascending and descending upon it. And right there, if you want a vision, that is just about the ultimate vision. A ladder between heaven and earth. Over the weekend I've heard some stuff about um, uh, the rapture again and being expected for Jesus to come back. But my, my issue is, my issue is, uh, presumably rapture people think that the ladder happens after Jesus comes back and that he's restoring the kingdom and, and then men and women return to their true state, uh, which may or may not be true. But as I see things, as I think, see things, the kingdom is near us, even in our mouth. Now is the kingdom at hand. And certainly when they went around Jericho, uh, it was true there was an angel of the Lord going ahead of them, as Joshua saw. And he made a mistake thinking he was a human. Who are you? Who, are you for us or against us, he said. But it's true there was this uh, angelic spiritual element going on. But Jesus, God never came back. They had to walk around a city. And the word was given in the 70s, although a lot of you weren't there. It doesn't make the word invalid. But God sent Ern Baxter to England, particularly to an England that was schooled in, you know, among Bible believers, we were all schooled in the doctrine of uh, a rapture, and um, that was the end, the end goal, really. And then he spoke in, and he said, just as uh, 
Israel were promised the land. We have been promised the land. Everywhere we plant the sole of our feet shall be made ours. And this idea of overcoming word. But it's overcoming word, not fighting with swords and cleverness. And so they went round Jericho and in that case Jericho fell. The, uh, the, the stones literally tumbled and crumbled. But it is for us a picture of us getting caught into the heavenlies and claiming and declaring what is true in heaven about earth. And what is true in heaven about earth because the Psalms are full of David being caught up in song, caught up in praise, and the statements and the sung declarations in the Psalms are about statements that come out of the I Am. They are eternal. Statements such as the earth, Psalm 24 once says, is the Lord's, and what's more, the fullness thereof. Not an inch outside the fullness is the lord's which isn't a very evangelical concept because they go on and on and on about how the devil rules everything so as far as i can see when jesus said shall he find faith in the earth Was, was that not um, the kind of faith statements that he's looking for? He said, this gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. We're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom is now. Where is that? This gospel, this gospel that took 12 men, who were pretty ordinary men, from their normal callings in life, in three and a half years, 42 months, took them from, yeah, there was some knowledge of God because they were Jewish. They had 2,000 years background. But then a lot of us have had Christian backgrounds across the nations now. So they took, took these 12, and at the end of 42 months, they were apostles, not pastors. They were apostles. Wow. And then they were baptised in the Spirit. How about that? They received the Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed into them after the resurrection. He breathed into them in the upper room. But they weren't baptised in the Spirit yet. Everything that had been imparted to them had been by the Holy Spirit under the anointing and ministry that Jesus was given as word spoken direct into their spirits. They had received it and it was growing and flourishing within them. Amazing. This is ministry. Next part of what I wanted to say was, was that um, in our relationships with one another, we really only get caught up in the secular way of relating. That's what's so exciting about a meeting where you gather in the name of Jesus and suddenly these normal individuals who sidle their way into church suddenly become a bit electric and they get caught up, they get caught up again in who they really are they're, get, they're, they're gathering in the name of Jesus Christ Lord of heaven and earth and they become switched on electric enthusiastic although it's disdained by English people that you should never be enthusiastic because it's not English <laughs> so Enthusiastic means God inside. God inside. That's what enthusiasm and theos means. So you come out of church buzzing, if it's a good church, if it's a real church where the Holy Spirit is, where people are born again, where there's praise and genuine catching 
lifting up the name, the holy name of God, who is worthy, who is the only one who is worthy, but he is now worthy. What he is doing is a fantastic thing. It, you can hardly express it. It is so large what he's really doing. Because he is Lord and Christ. And then people look around and think, crumbs, that person looked uh, just like a normal person. And you see that they're not just trees walking around, pretty dead, dead logs, or rocks, or impervious to feeling and enthusiasm. They're actually living indwelt beings of God himself. That's a difference. Secularism have a kind of mirror of that with rock concerts and enthusiasm and rallies, political rallies, or people being all in a room together with a common purpose. But it is nothing, nothing compared with the ability to move in the Holy Spirit and lay your hands on people, see them healed, prophesy into people's lives, know things about them that are going to be helpful for them, giving them words of knowledge, not to expose them, but to let them know that they can be free in Jesus Christ from things that are so buried they perhaps have forgotten about. These are deep, deep things. These are fantastic things. What about the praise? What about the agape love that comes in the name of Jesus? This is, this is fantastic. But we can live like this. We can actually live like this. That's the difference with Galatians 2.20. That is the difference with the anointing that is coming into the earth right now, lifting everything we had in meetings into a continuous life form. I have not prayed five hours to be able to say this. We're going to be living like this. What we... Yeah, some of us are. We are living like this. We can live buzzing, which is really good, isn't it? We are not built to live lukewarm lives. Secularism is about living in a polythene bag, pretending things, living just the best you can to survive. Secularism is rubbish compared with the electric knowledge of Jesus Christ buzzing through your veins. The Spirit of the Lord making his home and his residence actually in our bodies. Who would ever go back to secularism and have to drug yourself up in order to feel something? Or, or alcohol? Or, or buzzing with sex all the time? And look, buzzing with sex all the time doesn't actually work because it kind of overloads the system with adrenaline or whatever, endorphin, I don't know what it, what it is, but we're not, we, we are built to be filled with Jesus Christ when things happen at the right times, and it's glorious. We're not meant to be pressing all the buttons all the time to have these super hits and that, that actually don't achieve anything other than good, give good feelings briefly. We don't have to live like that. The good feelings come anyway as we do things in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the disciples came back from shopping and, and, and in John 4, he'd been preaching, he'd been, well, he'd been sharing really with a Samaritan woman, some of the most advanced stuff. He couldn't even tell them yet. How about that? A lot, <laughs> a lot of Catholic churches could do with people just going through John 4 again because they're backward. They haven't a clue what's in John 4. They read it out, but their eyes are glazed, their ears are stopped. Catholics haven't a clue about the reality of John 4. So they're just the same as the disciples. The disciples came back through shopping and they said to him, you know, why, why didn't you come shopping with us? You know, shopping for food. And Jesus said, I have food that you don't know about. And that's what we're teaching and taking ourselves into. This is what all the body is about. It's about learning to have this buzz from walking in the Spirit and doing exactly what God wants to with our bodies from day to day. It's a new way of living and it is 
Romans 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, living, that we may prove that this here will of God is good and acceptable. And actually, this is our spiritual worship. As much as uh, the other people get money from their copyright of their songs, this is our spiritual worship. And you can't really copyright that. So we shouldn't be we shouldn't be getting tired of each other. If we get tired of each other, then it means that we're not really connected. We're not really plugging in. We're not built to be lukewarm. We're built to be passionate. We're built to be enthusiastic. We're built to be living now what Jesus Christ is doing now through a Chris Welch or through any of you. What is Jesus Christ doing now, today, through you to alter the earth forever? I mean, it's fantastic, really. Talk about a high calling of God. It's amazing. 